What do librarians like to take with them when they go fishing? A uh, bookworm! <laughs> hey, dude, sub. Welcome back to Red X. We got some more School of Beards wrapping up this saga today. I hope you'll enjoy it. School of Beards, Chapter 26, It Never Ends. Ironic for that to be the title of a story included in the last video of this saga, no? <laughs> this is the second to last installment for this school year. It was the last until it started going way over the Reddit character limit, so uh, I decided to split it. The next one really will be the last of this school year. I don't expect there to be anything to talk about during the summer months, since I'm only doing online summer school this year. Assuming they pick me for summer school at all, I don't really know. So no lab and no beard interaction, so I'll probably be spending the summer finishing up the Bowser Beard Saga. I'm sure I'll be back in the fall with more tales. It appears that all beards, except Manny Beard, maybe will be returning in the fall. Oh man, Manny Beard's my favorite. <laughs> so now for a really beefy, super-sized set of tales. Ooh, juicy. Story number one, a tale of two Manny Beards. Friday. Ah, yes, Friday. Three weeks and one day until summer. The last day of state testing, Cinco de Mayo. A lovely day to just round out the week and kick back. Yeah, smoke a L, what's wrong with that? <laughs> uh, it did start as a very chill day, because you were smoking L's, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in sort of a mood today. I had finished planning all my lessons and creating all my slideshows for the rest of the year. I'd even scheduled the remaining assignments to post in Google Classroom. I was literally planning for next year already. Yes, this was OP on top of her game. God, I wish I could schedule my YouTube videos like even a few days ahead, <laughs> but I'm just incapable. Uh, so when it was time to hold the door of my classroom for my second period students to come in, I was pumped. We were watching an animated feature that day, Brave, so I was ready to chill and have a laid back Friday. I opened the door and stood there, alternating between greeting students and disassociating into my own head. <laughs> I watched students and teachers pass absentmindedly. I noticed Manny Beard head down the stairs. Odd for him to be in the math swing and with a blazer and a mustache. Wait, what? Shh. He's undercover. <laughs> I was snapped from my thoughts as I did a double take. The man in front of me certainly looked like Manny Beard, but in place of a cardigan or a pea coat, he had on a blazer. And instead of being clean shaven, he had a mustache. He also had a substitute teacher badge instead of a staff badge. You know those old TV shows where the evil alternate reality version of a character has a mustache but is otherwise identical? <laughs> Think Star Trek, Superman, or my personal favorite, Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. Wait a minute. This isn't my world. Disappointed! So yeah, I, I felt like I had fallen into an alternate universe. It's been known to happen from time to time. As soon as I started class and they were watching their film, I messaged Beetle about the doppelganger, who I shall henceforth refer to as Manny Stash. Beetle says, I, I know, I saw him. He's subbing for typical beard today, Beetle replied. And you didn't warn me, I asked. Didn't think of it. Just like a creepy version of Manny, Beetle said. Yeah, that mustache does take him from awkward goofball to creepy, I agreed. There's definitely some subtext with the mustache like that, right? Only thing worse might be the, the big Coke bottle glasses. And then all you need is a windowless van. <laughs> windowless van. Uh, and so I just kind of forgot about it after that. I figured that that was the last I had seen of Manny Stash, but I was wrong. This was the last day of Teacher Appreciation Week, and as such, they were serving sangas for lunch. Was that sandwiches? Yeah, I'm hip. I know about the lingo. <laughs> or at least that's what they claimed. What it actually was was a few finger sandwiches, crisps, and a fizzy drink. Crisps is tato chips. Sandwich and chips. We can't complain about this. We're looking at a gift horse in the mouth right now. The budget is three nickels and a shoestring. 
<laughs> Beetle and I had a second lunch, given the small amount of food remaining. I wasn't sure how many in third lunch would even get anything. In either case, I parked Beetle's wheelchair at a table and got some food for us both. I wasn't particularly happy, as I hadn't packed lunch since we were led to believe it would be provided, and I was way more hungry than two finger sandwiches and a few crisps, but I digress, as I so often do. You want to digress? Let's talk about the, the thin-ass slices of pizza at the school pizza party. Elijah, can we cut in a meme for that? <laughs> That's enough fucking slices, man! That's enough slices! What are you doing? <laughs> I put the scantily filled plate in front of Beetle and shrugged. Guess I'll make a cuppa and have a granola bar to supplement this lunch, I said, as Manny Beard sat down with us. Beetle didn't sigh loud, but he sighed loud enough that I heard him. Hi, Manny Beard, I said cheerily. Hello, Manny Beard replied as he started to munch on some crisps, crumbs flying everywhere as he talked. Contracts are due today. Uh, have you made the decision yet? I asked. Not a hundred percent. I'll decide before tonight, Manny Beard said. I'll be back next year, COVID Beard said as she sat with us. Oh, great. <laughs> I forced a smile. I knew at least one English position for next year was open because Mr. Principal had told us so in the staff meeting the day prior. He had also mentioned that, due to the teacher shortage, the other principals in the district were getting a bit cutthroat with trying to poach teachers from other campuses, and that interview processes had become very much an exercise in urgency. Something about the idea of cutthroat principals amuses me. They can't be that cutthroat, they got pal right in the name! But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, this is only a good thing. Twist some arms, get some higher pay, that's what I'm about. I'm a contract mercenary, I got no loyalty to this school. <laughs> anyway, I, I didn't know who was leaving quite yet, but I suspected it was Daria since they were trying to find a replacement department head. I also hoped that when all was said and done, some of the beards would be leaving for the sake of Beetle's sanity, but this was not to be, uh, we'll get there. Foreshadowing! <laughs> It was around this time that Manny Stash walked into the dining room and got in line for some food. I looked at Beetle and he looked back at me. You have a doppelganger, I said to Manny Beard. What's that? Manny Beard asked. I bit my lip and fought the urge to slam my head into the table. Uh, it's someone that looks a lot like you but isn't related to you. Oh, who looks like me? Manny Beard asked. The sub that's in for Typical Beard today, I said, gesturing. Manny Beard looked at him, and then back at me. You think he looks like me? Trade your cardigan for a blazer and grow a mustache? Yeah, I, I do, I said. Oh, <laughs> I'd never grow a mustache, Manny Beard said, as the point flew right over his head. <laughs> uh, there you go, don't worry about it, kiddo. Manny Stash finished getting his food and looked around for a place to sit. You can sit with us, COVID Beard said. I blinked. I had never loved COVID Beard more, or at all, than in this very moment. <laughs> Thanks, said Manny Stash as he sat down. His voice was nowhere as deep as Manny's, and he had a hint of a European accent. My guess would be British. I like how I'm switching the voice around. Manny's high and nasally, the, the other guy is deep. It was my first impression, I gotta stick with it. <laughs> I looked from one Manny to the other, and yeah, they looked the same. Same long stringy hair, same string bean figure, basically the same height. Even their facial features were nearly identical. Aside from the mustache and blazer that Manny Stash wore, and the cardigan and nail polish that Manny Beard wore, they could have been twins. It has been known to happen from time to time. I've seen people who look eerily like myself. <laughs> Evidently, you're my Doppler, Manny Beard said. <laughs> Dopplerada. I sighed and hung my head. Doppelganger, Manny Beard. Hey, you think so? Manny Stash asked. Manny Beard shrugged. She does, he pointed at me. Yeah, you two look very similar, I nodded. I don't know about all that. Manny Stash said, seeming slightly offended. Oh, I love your accent! Where are you from? COVID Beard asked. Originally England, but 
I've been in the U.S. for most of my life, Manny Stash said. Covid Beard sounds like she's from England, too. This is getting weird. <laughs> Are you excited about the coronation tomorrow? Covid Beard asked. I guess you all are. You're all British, so I guess it's a big deal for you. She added, looking at Beetle and myself. Beetle and I both glared at her. I'm Irish, not bloody British, Beetle said. <laughs> Covid Beard shrugged. Eh, same thing. <laughs> Uh, that's American geography for you. No, it's not the same. I'm from Dublin, the Republic of Ireland. We rejected British rule. Have you never learned about the atrocities that the British inflicted on my people and the civil war that followed? I literally grew up in Ireland during the Troubles. Beetle started to rant. I continued, but he switched to Irish, and the only word that I really understood in what followed was gobshite. <laughs> uh, yes, I did hear about that. The car bombs were very popular. <laughs> if you ever want to piss off an Irishman, yeah, just call him British. Ow! Oh! COVID Beard said. And honestly, I couldn't care less about the coronation either. I'm Aussie, and while we're at least part of the Commonwealth, I'm an Australian Republican. I'm for Aussie independence. I hate the crown being the head of our state, I said. Manny Stash looked at us. As I said, I've been in the U.S. for most of my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, this conversation just get real weird, isn't it? OP says, honestly, I don't see why so many Americans are so interested in the coronation. America rejected British rule long ago. I mean, monarchies are kind of inherently fascinating. Manny Beard just shrugged. It's historical, and the fashion's sure to be spectacular. I guess. Anyway, how your class is going, Manny Beard? I asked, desperate to change the subject. The royal family was one of my least favorite topics of discussion. Manny Beard shrugged. Oh, the kids are getting restless. Uh, they don't want to listen to anything. Manny Stash looked at him. Wait, you're the teacher across the hall from me today, aren't you? Manny Beard nodded. Yeah. If you're in typical Beard's room, your kids were so loud before lunch. I had the door to my room closed and I could still hear them, Manny Stash said. Yeah, they keep coming in and out of the classroom. They won't stay in their seats, Manny Beard explained. <laughs> God, this is pathetic. Uh, those kids are gonna eat you alive. Or rather, they're currently eating you alive. Manny Stash just looked at him, but... You're the teacher. I bit my lip. Was Manny Stash calling Manny Beard out? Yeah, they just don't listen. That's all. <laughs> Manny Beard said simply. Uh, okay, make them listen. <laughs> Sounds like a classroom management issue, Manny Stash replied. Beetle coughed, nearly choking on his sandwich. <laughs> I have a really good classroom management. I used to work at an alternative school with some really tough kids. Yeah, Manny Beard knows all about these streets, man. <laughs> I fought the urge to roll my eyes. Here we go again. Manny Stash looked unimpressed. I'm just saying, I'm a sub, and I have no trouble keeping my students in the classroom. You have sophomores. I have freshmen. They're, they're different. Yeah, I'd say the freshmen are easier to wrangle, <laughs> Manny Beard said, starting to get a little defensive. Uh, huh. okay. Well, after lunch, could you keep your kids quiet? My students are trying to write an essay, Manny Stash said. It was at this point that Manny Beard piped up and demanded a Manny versus Manny dance-off in the middle of the dining room. <laughs> now, no, I wish that had happened, and I totally would have filmed it. <laughs> Can you even imagine? Manny Beard pulls out his flash dance moves in the middle of the dining room, and Manny Stash counters with some elegant, gentlemanly dance. Probably a waltz. My god, it would be delicious. <laughs> Just take a moment, savor the thought. All right, well, here's what actually happened. Oh, I'll do what I can, Manny Beard said, almost glaring, I think. It is hard to read expressions on Manny Beard's robotic face, but I'm pretty sure that that was a glare. Probably, maybe, perhaps. Thanks. I appreciate it. Manny Stash said curtly as he stood up and walked away. He's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a straight shooter. What do you want? 
I like that guy. Shave your mustache, maybe we can hang out sometime. Uh, I know you think he looks like me, but I, I certainly don't act like that, Manny Beard said once Manny's stash was gone. I just nodded and crammed some crisps into my mouth. I hope we see Manny Stash subbing again because I need part two of this interaction. After work that day when Beetle and I were recounting it, we couldn't stop laughing over Manny Stash calling out Manny Beard. He is my hero, <laughs> Beetle said. Yeah, he's, he's an MVP, I'll tell you. I laughed. He did what you should have done months ago. Beetle nodded and then shrugged. Probably. <laughs> nah, definitely, but we are who we are. Story number two. Beard's gonna beard, as they do. On this day, Beetle, who was finally out of the wheelchair and walking again, pulled into our parking place. It was early because we had a meeting about graduation. Several other people were arriving just as early, including English Beard. Beetle and I got our things, as did we one, and the three of us walked towards the building discussing how, in two and a half weeks, we one would be a senior. You are not prepared. We still had to walk up the ramp because stairs were not yet a thing that Beetle could handle. Behind us, a teaching assistant that we will call Vera was also headed inside. Hey, that's a killer Pink Floyd song. Can we cut that in, Elijah? Vera, Vera, what has become of you? Suddenly, we hear English Beard's voice ring out in a panic. Is this your car? Hey, hey, hey ma'am! Is this your car? <laughs> Shit. Uh, we turned around expecting to see a horrific scene. I didn't notice anything off, but English Beard looked absolutely terrified. He was standing by Vera's car. Is this your car? English Beard called out again. Convinced that something was terribly wrong by the urgency in English Beard's voice, Vera who is not a young woman, mind you, I would have guessed from the name, honestly, <laughs> goes running back towards her car. I wonder what that was all about, I asked Beetle. Beetle shrugged as he hobbled along. No idea. With English Beard, really, who knows? Vera ended up catching up to us since Beetle had to walk so slowly. As we approached the building, I asked, is everything all right? Vera rolled her eyes and nodded. Yes, I I dropped a sweater outside of my car. I blinked. Are you bloody serious? <laughs> Vera sighed. Uh, the way he was acting, I was expecting to find my car rolling backwards or something. Yeah, why wouldn't you just pick up the sweater and, and bring it to her? <laughs> uh, I was speechless. A feat rarely accomplished. Red nose, I got a big mouth. I can't speak to the veracity of that statement at this time. Red X Industries lawyers have informed me that it would not behoove me at this time. We're moving on. Beetle rolled his eyes. Well, I'm just glad everything's okay. And with that, Vera headed into the copy room and Beetle and I headed toward the auditorium for our meeting. He sounded like something was terribly wrong. I sighed. Beetle shrugged. Beard's gonna beard. <laughs> Uh, maybe he's into Vera. Maybe he wants to watch her pick up the sweater. You know what I'm saying? Hey! Uh, story number three, the dilemma of Manny Beard. Two and a half weeks of school left. State testing is over. Graduation plans have been set. Senioritis is in full swing, and, well, that goes for the teachers, too. I, personally, had not even had a case of senioritis this severe since my junior year of high school, which was Beatles' senior year. I didn't even have it this bad my senior year. And that really seemed to apply to everyone at Standard High. Even the freshmen were catching senior-itis. It is truly contagious. Was that's just like where you blow off school and don't really care no more? Maybe that's what I've been afflicted with my whole life. <laughs> so that's why it was no shock to me to find out that the normally quiet Sonia was venting to Beetle while he was in her room. Her students were working, and so she and Beetle were sitting at her desk chatting. Any word on anyone leaving? Beetle asked. Sonya shook her head. No, but I'm not sure about Manny Beard. Contracts were due last Friday. How do you not know? I asked. Sonya said, District gave him an extension because he couldn't make a decision. Oh, I see, Beetle said. He just needs to go, Sonya said, and this caught Beetle's attention. Sonya never made comments like that. 
She was usually very neutral and reserved. <laughs> I'm just over it. I I've tried to be patient with him, but he is hopeless, Sonya lamented. He is frustrating, Beetle agreed. I tried to talk to him. I asked him if Lana had visited his room to offer any feedback, Sonya started. Lana is our campus instructional coach. She's leaving and Beetle's actually applying for her job, which, wish him luck. It is literally her job to go into new teachers' classes and offer feedback to help them become better teachers. Yeah, for being a robot, Manny Beard ain't too good at feedback, is he? <laughs> uh, Malfunction. Need input. Beetle asked, did Lana give him feedback? Sonya sighs. Uh, Manny Beard said he convinced Lana to not come into his room at all. <laughs> but, how? Why? Beetle asked. <laughs> Uh, admittedly, this was no easy task to put Lana off. She had even come to observe my classroom in spite of my best efforts to point out that this wasn't actually my second year teaching, just my second year in high school. I don't know, but for some reason he didn't want her in there. All he said about it was, and I quote, What exactly would she see if she came in? Sonya said. Beetle blinked. Um... A lack of classroom management? <laughs> uh, yeah, that guy needs help more than anybody. But it sounds like nobody's a fan of Lana, and I think that's sad. I'm gonna bring Lana a cup of coffee. Sonya nodded, a and the teacher that is woefully underprepared. I asked him what he's doing in class, and he got upset. He did that thing that he always does when he's pissed. He just stared, and his face darkened, and he turned and walked away without a word. What a weirdo. Keep him upset. Keep him away from me. <laughs> Beetle asked, What the hell? He can't even tell you what he's doing in class? Sonya asked, You're in there with him some. What is he even doing? Beetle admits, See, I'm only there for half the period, but based on my limited observations, not much. Yeah, he showed up. <laughs> That's it. Cut me a paycheck. I even asked him if I could see his slides, Sonya continued. Beetle shook his head. He hasn't been using slides. Oh, I know. He said as much. When I asked why he didn't have any slides, he said that he needed to be his authentic self and write on the board and lecture, Sonya said. This is all really weird. This conversation's going on a long time, too. <laughs> Beetle took a moment to process what she had just said before he asked, Authentic self? That prevents him from using slides. Sonya shrugged. Apparently, maybe that's for the best. His slides are really hard to read. It was a solid background color with bright, clashing text. I showed a set to Mandy, and her poor graphic design brain almost had an aneurysm, Beetle said. Yeah, but now he can't upload notes for the kids who require notes to be provided by their IEP, Sonya said. Beetle nodded. That is a problem, and his classes are very sped heavy, so I'll talk to him about it. Man, everybody's just talking to everybody. Let some heads roll. Let's see some action. <laughs> Sonya said, but that just shows he's only thinking about himself, never the students. And it's been that way all year. Whenever I ask him how his classes are going, it's about him and how tired he is and how he doesn't have enough time to get his work done. But I see him wandering around and on his phone during conference all the time, Sonya said. I think just communication issues abound in this school. <laughs> Sit him down, have a talk, I know he doesn't respond well, but if you just present a united front, everybody telling him the same thing forever, he'll quit or he'll change. Uh, Beetle says, yeah, I, I've noticed that too. So later in the day, Beetle did go ask Manny Beard about creating some sorts of notes for his sped kids that needed it. Uh, I'm not doing slides. I need to be my authentic self. <laughs> that's that's his go-to line. If I lecture at the start of class, you can take notes and make copies for the sped kits, Manny Beard said. Beetle raised his eyebrow. Uh, no, mate. I'm not your secretary. It's your responsibility to get notes for those kids. So either make slides or write down on paper what you plan to write on the board. Either way, they need notes. But you're the sped teacher. It's your job. Manny Beard whined. I think Manny Beard's very confused about job descriptions, you know? <laughs> Beetle was just done at this point. I'm sorry, 
But who are you to tell me what my job is? Oh, look at him go off. I'm so proud. <laughs> and no, it's not my job. It's your class and your responsibility to make sure IEPs are followed, even when I'm not in the room. I don't give a crap how you get those notes to the kids, but you need to figure it out. I'm so proud. Look at him. Look at him. He found his dick in his balls and he grabbed them and he said, this is what I got. <laughs> use slides, use paper, use a fucking carrier pigeon for all I care. But you will follow the IEPs. They are legal documents and legally you do not have a choice. And with that, Beetle walked out of the room. Yeah, I I'd love to see it, honestly. He came to my room since we were both on conference. I know he's a popular character, but he's not a character I want to interact with anymore, Beetle said as he sat down and told me what had just happened. This is all a test from the universe, you know that, right? He's gonna keep needling you, Beetle, until you stand up for yourself 100% of the time. The next day, Manny Beard did have those slides in his Google Classroom. See, that's all he needs. A little bit of abuse, it's fine! <laughs> Story number four, speak now. I, I have been. <laughs> Do you remember a passing mention of a teacher named History Beard in chapter 17? God, that was so long ago, I, I don't know anything anymore. For those that don't, here's the context from that chapter. Other departments are not without their beards. I got a text a few minutes ago saying, oh my God, one of my kids was like, my history teacher just says a lot of sexual jokes. And I was like, oh, is it English Beard? And he's like, no, it's History Beard. Although, how sus is it that English Beard was that student's first guess? And how sad is it that they don't realize English Beard teaches English, not history? Sigh. Still does ring a bell. Can't remember the voice, but we're moving on. <laughs> All right. Now that we're on the same page, I can't take credit for writing what's about to follow. Even I am not that brave slash stupid. Plus, this is a bit of a word salad, and I like to think I'm a better writer than that. Maybe not the best OP on Red's channel, but at least decent. I I'll confirm that. <laughs> anyway, the following's an email that went out from History Beard to the entire campus one afternoon toward the end of the year. Spelling and grammar left intact from the original message, aside from some identifying details. Standard High School team, congrats to all our soon-to-be graduates and amazing kids that we have all proudly mentored, served, and are blessed to have taught. Incredible commendation to all of our SHS staff and the amazing educators we're blessed to have fighting the good fight with us all. Our graduation looks to be orchestrated with near military precision. <laughs> Vets, I humbly defer to you all. Cringe. <laughs> so great job, admin team, at putting this together. And now read no further if you're feeling sheepish today. I don't think I've ever been described as sheepish. After three lines of pleasantries aside, you can expect it's time for another short round of advocacy for all of us dedicated educators here at Standard High. Another state test, newly redesigned, and AP instructional year is almost completed. What can we, for the sake of our futures as educators in our district, hopefully agree on or at least stop being victims to? The syntax really is just horrible, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, one, our exploitative salaries and dystopian health insurance remain abysmal relative to what we do every day, every week, and yes, even on weekends, vacations, and in our dreams. Time for a teacher strike? Time for a teacher strike! Hello, class. You can call me Mr. Scab. <laughs> uh, number two. We're devalued, yet we don't have to be. Remain strong, vigilant, and connected. And confident about it. No shame, just well-earned conviction. Do not calculate your worth on the babysitter pay scale. And number three, our contract renewals remain oblivious to the necessary monetary and benefit adjustments we need relative to inflationary increases. Notice they had to change the due date on contracts. <laughs> they know what it is. Okay, so like, what are you even threatening to do here? Go ahead and just do it. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way from the intro of like how proud I am and now he's like, let me twist your arm for money. 
Uh, all while we have last minute and non-substantive board meetings, we are expected to, through near coercion, come back for more. Then quit. <laughs> Fortunately, for everyone in our community, we are overly dedicated warriors for our youth, families, and community. Cringe. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Uh, warriors, you're not, okay? Society needs warriors and it needs teachers, but <laughs> you know which camp you fell into, right? Uh, bigger and better, right? So, how can the inequities we face in 2023 still be so detrimental to our mental, physical, and entire well-being? We remain and endure anyways. Wait, we do? Are you talking to yourself right now? <laughs> Every year at Standard High, we lose 40 to 50 staff members. No cap. On God. Bruh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, you sent this to the entire faculty. It said no cap on God. <laughs> on God, no cap. On God, on God no, no cap. Uh... Are you drunk right now? So to those of us who remain, thank you. We can do more than just revel or revile your choice or both in our fate. What? What? <laughs> okay. This is going to end soon, right? <laughs> if not, I'm going to end myself. Those of you leaving after this year, bless up. To each of you, your future endeavors and family, you will always be a part of this struggle and our standard high school family. Forever linked, stand with us here or afar, you're still with us. That's right, it's not just a school, it's a brotherhood of warriors. No wait, teachers. <laughs> uh, you think this is so much more than it is, man. It's a fucking job. Cut me my paycheck and let me go home. <laughs> uh, every one of us has to remain strong, vigilant, and connected. And maybe it's time to stop just praying about it. <laughs> School safety. A whole other conversation. And outwardly promoting the massive changes we know are necessary for everyone's benefit. So far, you haven't offered a single solution, really. Aside from, like, we should interact more often, which, no, that sounds terrible to me. <laughs> uh, the earned confidence and tremendous ability we all share here at Standard High collectively encompasses centuries of educational knowledge and instructional experience. <sighs> Get to the point. <laughs> Think about that for a second. And I'm no math teacher. For an exit slip, Standard High School loses 25 to 30 percent of its staff annually, every year. Dang. Yes, dang. <laughs> I don't have a solution. Just that—that's sad that that happened, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. Strong, vigilant, and connected. You keep saying, "Stop fucking saying that." It doesn't mean anything. You're not saying anything. <laughs> Uh, and we can and will endure. Stop being quiet about it. At least you know I never will. I know you never will. Fuck. I know you never will. <laughs> and yes, this took a while to write. Deciding what to bold, enlarge, spelling. <laughs> no wonder kids copy off the internet. And now AI. Oh yeah, keeping it topical. What a... Oh, what a great joke. <laughs> and yes, if you're still reading, thank you for reading, I guess. That's what they pay me the big bucks for, honestly. <laughs> Google stream announcements are covered in ethereal and pixelated dust most weeks anyway. He has to be drunk writing this. I, I don't understand what would make a human sit down and be like, I need to get, to get this off my chest and then say absolutely nothing. Complain a little bit, offer no solutions. <laughs> you should have left it at the first three lines. Hey, it's been great working with y'all this year. Bye. What are you, stupid? I mean, yeah, he is. 
This email will likely earn me wrath, or at least another meeting from someone. It can count as professional development and occupational therapy, or make one contemplate distinguished or accomplished. What? <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh, I was just checking those boxes been working out for everyone. Praise again to all of you and everything you do for our students, especially for all of our proud graduates later this month. Have a good rest of the year and a relaxing summer. I look forward to another great graduation experience with all of you soon. Graduation experience. You make me want to puke. <laughs> best history beard. You're not the best. I, I guarantee you that. You're bottom of the barrel at best. As I said, even I am not that brave or stupid. That took some, what I believe is referred to in Spanish as cojones, and a large dose of stupidity as well. Yes, I think it's mostly the stupidity fueling them. <laughs> WTF? I texted Beetle after I read it. Yeah, I guess it's not just students that History Beard is inappropriate with, Beetle replied. What? That is History Beard? That was the teacher making inappropriate comments to students. Well, that adds a whole nother layer to that email, I said. It almost sounded like a call to unionize. Uh, that could be career limiting, Beetle said. <laughs> Interesting how that works. Uh, yeah, and if District sees it that way, it could be career ending, I said. Not sure if I've mentioned it before, but in our state, if teachers so much as mention unionizing, that is grounds for our license to be revoked. Thank your lawmakers. <laughs> we live in a state where unions just really aren't a thing. And for state workers, like teachers, it is illegal to unionize. Well, that is, uh, fairly ridiculous, I gotta say. True, that was poorly written, career limiting, and not altogether true, but I guess he made some points, Beetle said. I sighed, yeah, in the most grandiose and beardiose way. And what exactly is that gonna accomplish? Unless the state steps up, we aren't getting a raise in pay. All he did was hurt himself. He had to be drunk, dude. <laughs> He's just writing drunk emails. Exactly. Like, you can't just talk about it. If you want to make a change, bloody do it. Run for office, go work at the state. Change things from the inside, Beetle said. Nah, that's how you get digested and turned into doo-doo. But the pay's nice. <laughs> I froze. He had just repeated my words from when he was part of the Occupy movement. That sounds familiar. Almost sensible. Like maybe you've heard that before. My dear recovering hippie, have you finally grown up? God, Occupy movement, wasn't that adorable? <laughs> uh, no, absolutely not, Beetle said quickly. Your 17-year-old self would be so disappointed, I replied. Whatever. The point is, the email was completely pointless and just... What the fuck, Beetle said, trying to change the subject. Yep. What indeed, I agreed. But that, dear reader, sums up the morale at Standard High, albeit in the most grandiose and beardiose way ever. The beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> Don't you dare start a union. Couldn't be me, bro. That's why I like YouTube. It's like performance based. Oh, you gave the audience something that they like. Have more money. <laughs> Story number five is quiz time. How well have you come to know standard high school? Blah, I don't know. It's been a while. I'll do my best. Since this is the last tale of the year, let's have a quiz. Scenario. Ms. Dean sends out an email to the entire English department asking who is interested in the department head position. Beetle happily applies for it because some leadership experience would do him good. He interviews for it and it goes well. Ms. Dean later gets back to him and says that well, while they do see him in a leadership position eventually, they decided to go with someone else for this position. An email then goes out later that day to the English department announcing who the department head is. Who is it? Oh man, Miss Dean is buddy buddy with a lot of them. It's gotta be English Beard or Pastor Beard. My money's on Pastor Beard! Big money, no whammies. Did you take a guess? Time's up. Pencils down. If you said the new department head is Pastor Beard, 
Bam, bam, bam! Congratulations! You win nothing! <laughs> uh, yay, the blackest gift of all! Nothing! But of course, you do get to keep the joy of being right. And isn't that the most valuable gift of all? <laughs> yeah. Clearly, no one ever had a chance but him. Ms. Dean did the interviews as formalities, and it was really always gonna be Pastor Beard. I've never been so glad to be out of the English department, but Beetle is stuck with it. Next year's gonna be a complete and total shit show. Oh, Callie, why did you leave us? <laughs> because she didn't like the voice that I gave her, like, whatever. On a side note, when I was walking towards Beetle's room at the end of the day, I saw Pastor Beard standing in the doorway of his classroom, and who was with him? If you guessed English Beard, you get extra credit. Yeah, them two thick as thieves, ain't they? English Beard was already sucking up and trying to schedule a time to hang out with Pastor Beard. As an added bonus, Daria is not leaving. She did sign her contract for next year, and she is not even going to be the English three team lead anymore. They have yanked all leadership from Daria. If I were her, I'd seriously be job hunting. Yep, the English department is screwed. I mean, that's not much of a change of pace. It's, it's kind of been screwed the whole time. That's the genesis of the stories, is it not? <laughs> uh, uh, story six, SOS. Wow, we, we really did pack them in here, didn't we? Uh, we've made it to yet another Friday. Only two more after this. I was a bit groggy because I had passed out at five the night before. I did wake up around seven-ish long enough to watch a hockey game, or part of it, before passing out again. Fatigue was truly starting to catch up with me. I had even been getting messages in the Red X Discord from my friends, asking if I was okay because my absence had been noticed. Hey, join the Red X Discord if you haven't yet. Discord.gg slash Red X, hey! Perfect plug. <laughs> I was just too exhausted to engage in any way that wouldn't get me banned. Uh, hurrah for self-awareness. My penchant for pleasantries had been severely diminished by this point, and it was just better that I not engage with anyone that I didn't absolutely have to. Unfortunately, at work, I did have to. On this day, I had Wee One in my first class, and she was coming down the hall with her friend Tim, who I know because he's in one of my animation classes. I saw her stop and hug him tightly, and say in a very sugary voice, I love you. Tim hugged her back and said, Ha, oh, I love you too. And then he went on his way. I looked at Wee One and raised an eyebrow as she came into the classroom. Once Tim was long gone, I called her over to me. Wee One, if you're cheating on Wrestler, I'm gonna kick your ass. I mumbled into her ear. What? No, I'm not, she promised. That was a bad look then, I said. Wee One looked down, seemingly realizing why, and went to sit down. She didn't seem happy with me for calling her out. Maybe it's like a platonic, friendly kind of love. When the bell finally rang, I started class. Good morning, class. We made it to Friday, ten and a half days left, and that includes today. That's not a problem for most of you, because all of you have turned in everything but your portfolio, which means you're ahead of the game. All that is actually due today is your shirt design, I started. I noticed Wee One put her head down on the desk. She had not turned in her shirt design yet. She was not ahead of the game. <laughs> I heard her mumble something, so I stopped talking. Excuse me? What'd you say, Wee One? I said this is bullying, Wee One whined. I didn't name any names, what you want? Step your game up. <laughs> I blinked. She felt personally attacked since she hadn't turned in her shirt design. I never called her out in class, but her guilty conscience was getting the better of her. How exactly am I bullying you? Is there something you'd like to share with the class, Wee One? I asked, using her full first name. Imagine if her name was Elizabeth, and normally she went by Lizzie, but in this moment, I called her Elizabeth. That's how you know it's really real. Wee One turned red. She certainly didn't want to admit to the class that most of them were ahead of her, as far as classwork. No, ma'am, she replied sheepishly. Hell yeah, punk your kids in class. Let them know where they stand. I might be missing the, the moral of this story. <laughs> okay, then. I have started class and I am still speaking, I said. Sorry, she mumbled before sitting back in her seat. I finished talking to the class and gave them the rest of the period to work. 
No sooner had I sat down at my desk than I noticed a message from Mediabeard through the campus messaging service. Uh, can I get your help in the AV room? I still can't get the certification test to launch, the message said. What the feck? He, he was just doing certification testing? But reports were due in exactly one week to state. I finished testing and reporting over a month ago. I was in the midst of typing a reply when my phone buzzed with SOS, I need help with certification tests, said the message from Media Beard. I sighed, replying to you in Messenger, I texted back. I turned back to my reply in Messenger. I got class. Have you set up a testing group in the testing program? I have, but it didn't work, and now I can't even get into the testing program, and it won't launch on students' computers, but the program's there, and it should work, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I need help, came his next panicked message. Bro, you're a mess. Just quit. It's over for you. I sighed. I couldn't just leave him in a room full of kids having a meltdown. Okay, hang tight. On my way, I replied. I stood up and looked at my class. Hi right, guys, sorry, save your work. We're taking a field trip. Mr. Media Beard needs my help getting certification tests going, and I certainly can't just leave you alone, so you're all coming with me. Consider it a chance to stretch your legs, I said, as I headed for the door. Once my class lined up, I led them across the school to the AV room. Okay guys, hang out here, chill. Uh, let me get these tests going, and then we'll head back. Welcome to the chaos of the AV room, Media Beard said, clearly in a panic. I ran him through some basic troubleshooting steps, making sure the program was the right version, rebooting, making sure the group was the right way in the program, etc. Finally, I noticed that when he was having the students log into the test, he was giving them a group number, but no individual access code. Media Beard, have you given the students their personal payment codes? I asked. Is that the group code? He asked. I sighed. No. The group code's the group code. That's for reporting. The personal payment codes are individual codes that districts sent us to pay for the exam. Each student gets their own code, good for one test, and one retake if needed. The list of codes districts sent us are for us to share. I made a spreadsheet that I shared with you to keep track of them. Media Beard looked confused and went to his email to look for the email that I had sent him. I sighed. Go to Google Drives and do a search for the spreadsheets that I created that you have access to. Oh, uh, okay. He did so and found the spreadsheet. See? That one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Media Beard snapped. Each student gets their own code and they have to enter it to pay for the test. So make sure you notate which codes you use because leftover codes we can use to test next year, I said. Okay, he said as he put the entire spreadsheet with all of the codes onto the projector. He assigned them that way instead of printing out a code for each student. Sigh. <laughs> uh, how do you even know which student took which code? What the hell's going on right now? Once the students put in the payment code, guess what? <gasps> it worked! The test launched and the crisis was averted. I remind you that this is his second year teaching this content and my first and we were in exactly the same training side by side and got sent the same emails from district. Why was I helping this allegedly tech-savvy media professional that had worked in the industry launch tests a week before reports are due? And yes, his contract was renewed. I asked and he said, yeah, it got delayed, but I did get it finally. You're stuck with me, Mandy. <laughs> and he meant that in a joking way, but I'm sure you died inside a little bit. <laughs> oh, Media Beard, that, that's wonderful, I said, trying to be pleasant. Maybe next year he will just let me mentor him, but uh, probably not. That will conclude this tale of Beardery. I truly do want to thank everyone that's following this saga. I love writing it. I love hearing Red read it and his reactions, and that only happens because of you. Yes, you! The one reading or listening to this right now, so thank you. Remember to subscribe to Red X if you haven't already. Until the next time! Should I just do the second part? Should I get this all wrapped up today? It's gonna be a hell of a video, but you know what? We're gonna do it. <laughs> Let's see what happens. School of Beards, Chapter 27. Beard School is out for summer. Oh, what's that? A little bit of Alice Cooper? That's, that's nice. We have done it. The end of another school year. 
Before we jump into this last set of stories, remember to subscribe to Red X, home of the best cringe content on YouTube, Promise Swizzies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science, go ahead and look it up! God, I do miss that intro, honestly. But it kills retention, I can't do it any longer. It's nice when it's inserted into the video for me, though. <laughs> I missed that intro a lot, so I figured I'd just write it. We all do! But it's this YouTube optimization bullshit. If it makes you feel better, it seems to be working. <laughs> I waited until after graduation to post this because with Manny Beard at graduation, I figured anything could happen. And it did! <laughs> and with that, let's jump into this last set of beer details for this school year. Let's -a go! Story 1. No place like home campus. I was in a pretty good mood because I found out that District was ticked off at admin for considering moving my cave to a different room next year because they kept using my cave as backup for state testing. Evidently, the District was unaware that this was happening, but after I complained to Cook about the extent of it, she went to District and, well, I'm keeping my cave next year, right where it is, and testing use will be limited. I won without lifting a finger. Sometimes, bureaucracy works. Not often, but <laughs> it's beautiful what it does. <laughs> uh, yeah. Teeny tiny percentages, I guess. <laughs> we'll, we'll hang our hat on that. Of course, this good mood was not to last. On this day, I had a meeting with all the other graphic design teachers at another campus. We'll call it Click High School, because cult may or may not be YouTube friendly. Most things are okay on YouTube these days. They've reversed a lot of things. There was a point last November where I couldn't say gay, homosexual. Now it seems to be going a little differently and that's a really good thing. <laughs> the first thing you need to know is I have a history with Click High School. Remember all the way back in chapter one where I mentioned that I was a substitute teacher at Standard High before they hired me as a teacher? Well, there was one part that I left out because it was irrelevant to the story, but it becomes relevant here. It is true that I did sub at Standard High, but the part that I left out was that for half of the 2020 to 2021 school year, aka the COVID years, I was a long-term sub at another campus, and that campus was Click High School. To say it was a poor experience would be underselling it immensely. You could say that Elon Musk is well off, but that doesn't really express the massive mounds of money that malevolent menace truly has. Good alliteration! Likewise, saying that I had a poor experience at Click High School doesn't really express the absolutely traumatizing, terrible, troublesome experience that was my life there. It got so bad that I would leave work, cry the entire 30-minute drive to Standard High, pick up Beetle, and make him drive the rest of the way home because my eyes were sore from crying. You know what I do when I'm tired of crying? I, I just disconnect completely. <laughs> I can't have the emotions for this, goodbye. So what did I do at Click High School? Well, I was a long-term sub in ESL. That's where I got my start with it. When I walked in at the start of that year, I had never had a high school classroom before. I had no lesson plans, limited access to the curriculum since I was a sub, and I was teaching virtually because COVID. And what did I do? I built a curriculum, bonded with my class, and wrote my own lesson plans, even though subs don't generally write plans. Basically, I rebuilt their ESL program. I did apply for the job. After all, I was already doing all of the work for substitute pay. Might as well be getting teacher pay for being a teacher, right? Wrong. That's right, they ain't gonna pay you for something you're already doing for free. I told you, the, the, the budget is three nickels and a shoestring. They did interview me for the job, but then proceeded to yank me around for half a semester before finally saying that they were going to hire someone else. Who? No idea. But not me. <laughs> but they did want me to continue to long-term sub and do what I was doing until they found someone. Yeah, how about you go take a flying fuck at a rolling donut, right? <laughs> Honestly, when I didn't get the job, part of me was pissed because of all the work I put in, but part of me was relieved. You see, the culture at Click High School isn't like the culture at Standard High School. Their principal, whom we will call Mr. D, for reasons that will soon be clear, had been named the district's principal of the year, and his staff completely fawned over him. A staff mostly comprised of women. Yeah, it's not just the students that are fucking out the teachers now. The principal's getting in on it. Look at this! <laughs> uh, Click High School is basically just a giant orgy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lord, I apologize. I should have said it out loud. Uh, the male to female ratio at Click High School was considerably more unbalanced than at Standard High School. What struck me as odd was that Mr. D did not seem to warrant such admiration. During my interactions with him, I got a slimy car salesman vibe more than high school principal. I would come to find out that this went deeper than I knew. Can we just establish that the D stands for dick? That's what we're getting at, right? <laughs> I'm not a pervert for thinking this way, right? Y'all remember Avid Beard? Well, yeah, to her credit, she was the one that warned me. Mostly, I think she saw a chance to gossip, but nonetheless. I was visiting Standard High and telling the English department how much I miss subbing for them. They actually liked me at this time. This was long before English Beard even worked there, so certainly before that whole thing that made me a pariah. They missed me, too. Although, honestly, they missed having a sub at their beck and call, let's be real. Yeah. That's what it actually is. <laughs> anyway, Avid Beard was all too happy to jump in with the gossip. Be careful over there, Mandy, Avid Beard said. Why? What do you know? I asked. I had a training over there once, and this teacher that worked there started freaking out because the instructor who was also a teacher there was late. She started having an anxiety attack, and when I asked what was wrong, she said, Daddy isn't going to like this. Avid Beard explained. What? <laughs> Daddy. Oh! <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I hate everything that's going on here. <laughs> Avid Beard nodded. I know. I asked her, so you call your principal Daddy? And she said, of course. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, that's good spine powder. <laughs> uh, we had to come a long way to find it, I'll be honest with you, but there it is. There it is, I'm gonna just revel in that for a moment. <laughs> I love to hate it. I raised an eyebrow. I was skeptical, to say the least. Even then, I knew Avid Beard was not a reliable source, but on the off chance she was telling the truth, I had to know. Click High School wasn't exactly full of friendly teachers. In fact, where everyone at Standard High had been welcoming, it had been very much the opposite at Click High School. They treated me like an outsider that they were skeptical of. I had managed to at least have somewhat of a dialogue with the librarian. She helped me to ensure that my ESL students had books in their native languages to read during the pandemic. I went to her one day to ask about scheduling some book pickups for the students. This was when teachers were on campus, but students were virtual. Hey, can I ask you something? I asked after we had figured out the scheduling. Sure, what's up? She asked. Okay, so it's dumb, but somebody told me that you guys call Mr. D Daddy. Uh, silly, right? <laughs> I said with a laugh. She just blinked. Who told you that? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, not the answer. Her reaction caught me off guard. She wasn't laughing. <laughs> My eyes widened. Um, I don't remember. It just got mentioned in passing. Don't ask anyone else that question. Just don't even mention it, she said. Jesus. <laughs> I blinked. I want it out of this conversation. Uh, okay. I won't. I'll just forget I ever heard about it. She nodded and turned away. I have some work to do. If you need more books, let me know. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I rushed back to my classroom. After that... The librarian was very cold towards me. This school is a harem anime. I don't know <laughs> how to process this. To this day, I honestly believe that the reason Mr. D didn't hire me was because I'm too strong-willed and have a big mouth, neither of which fits in well with their cult-like structure, which it very obviously is at Click High School. At the semester break, they hadn't hired anyone, and they asked me to stay on for the rest of the year as a long-term sub. Basically, they wanted to pay me sub-pay for an entire year of teaching. I told them, no way. <laughs> and I begged the district and Mr. Principal to let me return to subbing at Standard High. I didn't even care that the regular sub-pay was less than the long-term sub-pay, I just wanted out. And it turns out that it all worked in my favor, because obviously Mr. Principal ended up hiring me for the very job that Mr. D rejected me for. And 
I'm very happy where I am now. And I don't even have to call Mr. Principal Daddy. <laughs> Gag. <laughs> Say what you will about standard high, but I will take it over click high any day. Okay, so I know that was a lot of backstory. That was just the backstory. I thought that was like the actual, okay. <laughs> That's fine. But I truly need you to understand why I so vehemently loathe everything about Click High, and moreover, why even being there gives me a mild case of PTSD. Alright, then where were we? Oh yeah! Meeting for graphic design teachers over at Click High. I was not happy about this because I hate being at Click High School, of course, but I also hated leaving my students with a sub this close to the end of the year. But alas, there it was. I walked into those familiar, loathsome halls. Daddy was in the main hall, greeting his subjects. Yeah, make sure to say hi to Daddy. <laughs> hey, Daddy! Mandy, what are you doing here? He asked as he looked me over. I was in full school spirit mode, standard high staff shirt and matching school spirit converse that I had custom made. Uh, graphic design meeting, I said. Oh, you teach graphic design now? <laughs> he asked. I nodded. Yeah, they did so great at fixing their ESL program that they gave me my true dream job, and now I'm relaunching their graphic design program. Okay, that was a bit of embellishment, but I wanted him to know that his loss was standard high's gain. Shame. We have an open ESL position here at the click, Mr. D said. That's how he referred to his campus. Imagine if a high school's name was Blue Mountain High and he called it The Mountain. Yeah, pretty cringy. Eh, not the cringiest thing I've seen so far. <laughs> Oh, yeah? I heard Patty didn't stay, I said. Patty was the one who they hired instead of me. She ended up retiring after one year at The Click. Yeah, well, we hired Emmy to replace Patty. <laughs> and now she's leaving, <laughs> Mr. D said. Shame. Yeah, I'm still at Standard High and quite happy. I heard the principals were turning to poaching from other high schools, so I'll save you the trouble. I'm not poachable, I said, wanting to just get away from him. You can have your old job in your old room, Mr. D said, in a tone that made me very uneasy. I have a perfectly lovely cave. Besides, my husband works at Standard High as well, and I like being on the same campus as the love of my life, I said pointedly. If you change your mind, let me know. Oh, enjoy your meeting, and uh, welcome back to the click, Mr. D said, as I quickly walked away to find the room that the graphic design meeting was in. Now, this might come as a surprise to you all, but I am not a social creature. I don't think a lot of people on the channel are. <laughs> it sort of attracts a certain vibe, you know? Beetle is my best friend, and aside from Callie, all my other friends are on the Red X Discord. Hence, my desire to not get myself banned over there. And I'm 150% okay with that. At that moment, I wanted to be in my cave more than anything. The pressure to be on and social was beyond exhausting to me, especially this late in the year. Kinda how I feel about the live streams, but I did do a live stream over on kick.com slash Dayton does. And I multi-streamed it over on TikTok as well. Are you missing out on this stuff? Come see how the sausage is made. That's all I'm saying. OP continues. Always the professional. I mustered every bit of perky in me to be lovely to my other campus counterparts. This did prove to be a challenge. One of them, more Karen than a beard really, would not shut up about how amazing her campus was and how she never has issues with phones because her kids are so well behaved. She also said that she couldn't post work early because they would have it done before they ever got to class. Oh, and of course she's teaching graphic design because she needed a break from her real job as an engineer. Oh, also did she mention she's an engineer? Because yeah, she's totally an engineer. Yeah, that's cool, man. I like trains too. <laughs> that's not the type of engineer. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just pulling on your nip-nops, you know? 
So she went on and on about how much she didn't like the curriculum at another campus she was at. So she complained and got 68 teachers from all over the country to back her up. And they changed the whole curriculum to what she wanted. Uh, okay, whatever. I wanted to ask if everyone stood up and cheered and clapped as well. Her and 68 other teachers? That means there were 69 teachers! Nice. I'd do whatever they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Another teacher was just insufferable. She kept asking for the same bloody stuff over and over, even after being told it just wasn't in the budget. She didn't know the cost of any of it, just that everything she wanted, think equipment and software licenses, was expensive and that our budget is nothing right now. I told you before, three nickels and a shoestring! She didn't even make arguments as to why we needed it. She just kept asking for the same stuff, in the same way. All of it was stuff we didn't need and that most of us wouldn't even use. Yeah, but it would be cool if I could use it at home, thanks so much. <laughs> I contributed my thoughts on what I felt needed to be added to the curriculum, which was met with agreement. I really only had that one suggestion. The rest of the time, I let them do their thing, which was woefully unorganized, disjointed, and overall a waste of time when I could have been grading papers. Bring the papers with you. <laughs> so, I decided that while they did their own thing, I'd organize my Google Drive. As I was doing this, I noticed something. I was still the owner on all of the ESL files for Standard High. Not just the ones I created, but like all of them. If I were to hit delete, Standard High would literally have to start from scratch, organizing their program with new teachers next year. But Ms. Dean did make clear that I was to have nothing to do with ESL anymore. If I deleted the folders, was that malicious compliance, or was it being a bitch for the sake of it? I mean, they're kind of one and the same sometimes. <laughs> I still haven't decided. I find the situation humorous, if not a bit morally ambiguous. How is it morally ambiguous? <laughs> uh, it's not a good thing to do. You'll be crippling the school for at least a year. The children will suffer because of it, etc, etc. You're trying to convince yourself that it's morally ambiguous. <laughs> I'm not falling for it. Ultimately, it was decided that one day wasn't enough for our meeting. <laughs> oh boy. So we would meet again one week later in the same place. I declined. I needed to be on my campus because I did have some actual work to do. Grades would be due the day they wanted to meet, and I wasn't the only one. About half of the graphic design teachers agreed to meet again the following week, and we would all be meeting again on August 1st. So, I get to start my school year back at The Click. Lovely. Yeah, this was a very real reminder that for all the beardery at Standard High, it really could be so much worse. Do you think Mr. Principal at Standard High is jealous that nobody calls him Daddy? <laughs> Story number two, lunchtime. I'm glad you said I could use a bit of a break. After that long mammoth of a tale that the last story was, here's a short one for you. So this happened the day after my meeting with Click High. Sonia wanted to end the school year with some team building. So she asked Miss Dean if they could have some off campus team meeting at a nearby restaurant and grab some food. And who is footing the bill for all this food? You'll say school board, but really it's taxpayers, right? I mean, considering the sandwich and chips lunch that I heard about before, I, maybe not. Miss Dean told them no. <laughs> Sonia then decided they'd just order takeaway and do the same thing on campus. She reserved a conference room and everything. So the day of the eat and meet came. And OP confirms in kick chat that they brought their own food. <laughs> Which is good, then you actually get enough to eat. Uh, Beetle had ordered some enchiladas and was looking forward to a hot meal during the workday. COVID Beard didn't go because, well, she wasn't feeling well and needed to just go home early. I know that comes as a shock. Me <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Meanwhile, Mandy Beard decided that he would sit next to his BFF Beetle. Manny hadn't ordered any food because the catering menu looked good, but nothing on the regular menu appealed to me. And what Manny actually means by that is like, I'm not hungry, I'll just have some of your fries, and then he eats half of everything. That's the weird part, Beetle didn't even bring fries. <laughs> uh, 
What Manny Beard did have, however, was a bag of crackers. As Beetle tried to eat his food, Manny both ate his crackers and talked at the same time. Oh, bread crumb covering. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it didn't take long for Beetle to realize that small bits of cracker crumbs were flying at him and his food. Oh, God, I hate it. <laughs> Uh, uh, he shifted to the side to dodge the airborne particles that threatened to infect his space. It was here that Manny Beard declared that he had signed his contract, but still wasn't sure if he'd be back next year because he had until July 3rd to pull out of his contract, and he really just didn't want to make a commitment. Bro, you're a mess. This is not a will-they-won't-they they situation, all right? Grab your balls and make a decision. After the meeting, everyone went on their own way, except for Manny Beard, who cornered Beetle in the mudroom. Oh, that's what they call it nowadays, right? <laughs> I was in my cave waiting for him when I got a text. SOS! I've been cornered! Mudroom! I sighed. Come on, Wee One. I gotta go save Dad. Wee One chuckled. Oh, no. As she followed me faithfully as we headed downstairs. Oh good, you're already here. We gotta go, love. We one has that thing. See you later, Manny Beard, I said as I grabbed Beetle's arm as I passed and just kept walking. That's a good strategy, honestly. Keep it moving. People say hi, you say hello, and keep it moving. <laughs> the next day, Beetle went into Sonya's room for inclusion, and she smiled at him. Sure you got all the crumbs off, she teased. <laughs> Beetle rolled his eyes. Right? Sonya nodded. Manny Beard is why I don't eat lunch in the workroom anymore. Manny Beard would walk over and just stand over me, like right over me, and talk while he ate, which would just send food everywhere. One day, he was eating some chicken salad, and a piece of chicken flew out of his mouth and landed on my arm. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, how do you not strike him at that point? Or at least have a firm conversation about keeping your fucking mouth closed when you're chewing your nasty food. Eating like a toddler anyway. Chicken salad, cracker. I don't want anything with too much salt on it. It's too spicy for Manny Beard's fucking robot brain. <laughs> All right. I don't know what happened. This got really irrationally angry for no reason. Deep breath, we'll calm it down. Oh, bloody hell. That's disgusting, <laughs> it really is, Beetle said, before vowing not to be near Manny Beard eating ever again. You could do that. You could also strike him. I'd be okay with either. <laughs> Story three, Little Eyes. Ever since it was announced that Pastor Beard was the new department head, he'd been walking around like a rooster, puffing out his chest. He'd already gone out of his way to talk to Beetle, as if to rub it in that he got the department head job and Beetle didn't. It was annoying, but I stayed out of it. I even played nice when Pastor Beard stopped me in the parking lot one day and asked me about my weekend plans while I was waiting for Beetle. Met you in the parking lot? Glad he didn't have a lead pipe. You should have turned the tables on him. Got a, a pipe out of your trunk and be like, today's the day, Pastor Beard. You fucked up just one too many times. <laughs> Uh, what are your plans this weekend, Mandy? Pastor Beard asked as he leaned against the side of my car. A big bag of weed and also stop leaning on my car. <laughs> uh, but OP says, ah, uh, nothing major. Weekend chores, Beetle has some schoolwork to get done. He's gonna put some snake repellent in the yard. I'll probably clean the house and spend time with my mom, I said, trying to be pleasant as I could. What I really wanted to do was tell him he was a bastard that should never teach, let alone lead a department. You should come and watch me on Sunday. I'm preaching this weekend, he said with a smile. His tone came off like he intended it to be a flex. It probably was for him. This isn't about letting the word of God pass through you and into others. This is about ego. I forced a smile, just saying, no thanks, not really my thing. God isn't your thing, he asked, leaning towards me a bit. Ah, uh, here we go. Just let people do what they're gonna do, all right? You're not gonna change anybody's mind in a fucking parking lot. <laughs> or anywhere else, but especially not a parking lot. I took a step back. Uh, it's not the same one that you believe in, I stated absentmindedly, playing with the flower of Aphrodite pendant that I wore around my neck. Are you Catholic or something? He asked. 
<laughs> uh, what? I love this. His worldview is so small he can't imagine anything besides Protestant or Catholic. <laughs> uh, adorable. I fought the urge to roll my eyes. People presumed since Beetle was Irish that we were a Catholic family a lot. Instead, I shook my head. No, actually, if you must know, I'm pagan. Pastor Beard looked taken aback. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, most concerning. Oh, how uncouth. <laughs> so while I appreciate the invite, uh, not my thing, I said again. I mean, you could still go, but presumably you'd only go if you actually like this person, which clearly you don't. But I guess he doesn't know that. He's just not too good at picking up on the social cues or something. Pastor Beard says with a cocky smile, uh, You should come anyway. I'd love to look out on Sunday and see you there. And who knows? If you hear what I have to say, you might change your mind about being pagan. Wouldn't that be a great notch in your belt? <laughs> I converted the heathens! <laughs> uh, so, I looked around, hoping Beetle and Wee One were going to be there soon. Yeah, I doubt it. Anyway, uh, I hate to keep you on a Friday. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. I'm not in a rush. You're fine, he said. Did you hear that I'm the new department head? Yeah, I know, I said. Beetle told me. He applied too, you know. I know. They need someone that's a strong leader for the job, though. Someone that can guide the department the way I guide the church. <laughs> They can't pick someone with a weak personality. A man should be able to lead his church, his work, and of course, his wife. Pastor Beard said pointedly. Bro, are you taking shots at Beetle when he's not even here to defend himself? This conversation is getting exceedingly uncomfortable. Have we violated the sexual harassment policy yet? Pretty sure it counts. <laughs> uh-huh. A, a good leader knows to defer to those wiser than he is. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I said as I saw Beetle and Wee One. Love! H hey! I waved. Beetle saw Pastor Beard and looked unhappy. Hi, Pastor Beard. Have a good weekend, you guys. <laughs> See you later, Mandy. Think about my offer. <sighs> what a creep. What the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> he said as he went and got into his truck that sat on tires far too big for it. What was that? Be last as we got in the car. I shrugged. He was either hitting on me or just being a pompous ass. Uh, or both. It's hard to say. And we went on our way. Definitely both. <laughs> the next workday, Beetle walked into the workroom and saw Pastor Beard in there talking to Vera the assistant mentioned in chapter 26. Uh, just do your best to set him up for success, Pastor Beard told Vera as he walked out of the workroom. Vera sighed. Are you okay, mate? Beetle asked her. Vera shook her head. Uh, we're almost done. Almost there. What happened? Beetle asked. Well, only two of the kids in that group in the hall workspace need my help. Vera said, pointing to a group outside Pastor Beard's room. The other kids are missing work, and Pastor Beard kicked them out of the classroom. I'm supposed to watch them and make sure they behave, but they've already told me they aren't going to do anything. Beetle's expression went dark. You're a sped assistant, not a babysitter. I know, but I've never seen him actually help anyone. He doesn't go around the room to help. He just tells them to be quiet and pokes them. I don't know why he feels the need to touch them. Because he's a creep, confirmed. He tells them if they need help, they can go to him, and he just sits at his desk the whole time. But no one is going to go to him for help because they don't like him, Vera vented. Beetle sighed. <sighs> you know, he's department head next year, right? Oh, I know. He told me no one else wanted it, Vera said sadly. Beetle blinked. No, ma'am. I interviewed for it. That's just what I heard, Vera said. He lied. Beetle shook his head. 
What Pastor Beard didn't know is that Beetle had something else in the works. We weren't sure that it would pan out as of this point, and even of this writing, we still aren't. But Beetle wasn't going to take Pastor Beard's crap lying down, and for that, I was proud of him. As always, hope floats. I think Pastor Beard's going to have to push Beetle to the edge of insanity in order for him to actually stand up and explode. But I guess we'll see. Uh, story 4, wrapping it up. That's right, condoms is important. <laughs> Three and a half days till summer. Grades were due. I sat down at my computer to adjust the grade book and turned on some music. Not even kidding. The final countdown was on the radio. Yes, I listened to the radio. Satellite radio, to be precise. It was the perfect music for my working on the end of the year checklist, and I felt like I was in a movie, and this was my montage music. Yeah, that does work. <laughs> We reached the point in the year where all the teachers were just playing movies. For my part, I was letting them watch the Super Mario movie. I had some happy students. I also wrote We Want a Pass to spend the day in the room. She was done with her work and wanted to help me with some graphic design work for next year's launch. We are launching an on-campus design firm. She asked me which workstation she could work at, and I did the worst thing a mom can do to her child. I sat her next to my baby neck beard. She started working, but within 10 minutes, she came to my desk. Mom, she started. I looked at her. Excuse me? She sighed. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Mandy. Yes, ma'am, I asked her. Can I sit on the other side of the room because it's less claustrophobic and I have a friend over there? She trailed off. I chuckled and leaned in so only she could hear me. You don't appreciate sitting next to baby neckbeard? She looked cheapish. Not really. Can you smell him? I asked. Dude, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, good. Breathe it deep. I want you to smell him. <laughs> what did I do wrong? I don't understand! No, that's not what happens. Instead, Wee One makes a disgusted face and said, Yeah, I can sort of smell him. Okay, yeah, go ahead and move. I nodded. In the meantime, Beetle was texting me. Beetle, why does Manny Beard always start class with how are we instead of how are you? OP, because that's what's in his programming. Beetle, Lamau, <laughs> I will not miss him this summer. You know, he said he's only helping with graduation because he didn't help with either dance. I thought it was mandatory that we do one of the dances. OP, huh, one, yeah, it is, and I bet they got on him and forced him to help with the graduation, and two, why the hell would they let him help with the graduation? <laughs> This event is stressful enough without adding Manny Beard into the mix. Beetle, he said he'd rather work graduation because it's his favorite event, because he gets to see his kids move on. OP, but he's a freshman teacher. He doesn't know many, if any, seniors. Beetle, I know. Oh, and COVID Beard is leaving. OP, what? Forever? Beetle, I'm watching your class for the rest of the period. OP, oh, leaving for today. Beetle, <laughs> yeah, don't get too excited. OP, damn, three and a half days left. Heaven forbid she stick it out, Beetle, right? And right about that time, I was hoping my beard encounters were over, at least until graduation. It happened. I had to email English Beard. Why? Because I needed one of his students, who happened to be one of my most talented graphic design students, to come over to my class the next day during his class. I cringed at having to interact with him. I asked Beetle if I should even bother. We're not doing anything. Why would he say no? Beetle asked. He's a beard, I replied. Eh, fair, Beetle conceded. Finally, I took a breath and started to type. English Beard, if it's all right with you, can Sarah come to my class during fifth period tomorrow to do some graphic design work? Thanks, OP. Two hours later, he replied, What work? Why should I send her to an elective? My class is core. I sighed. It's okay if you're doing something in class. I just thought it would be okay if you're just watching movies, I replied. We are just watching movies, but my class is still a core class, and yours is not, English Beard replied. Are you being difficult on purpose? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is. OP replies, you are correct, however, Sarah is going to be in my Graphic 3 class next year, and I want to get all my Graphic 3 students together for a meeting before the end of the year, and the rest of them are in my fifth period. If you don't want to send her, that's fine. Uh, okay, 
That would be fine. I'll allow it, Englishbeard finally said. Ooh, look at you, the great gatekeeper. <laughs> I sighed and wrote a pass to give to Sarah. Meanwhile, in the English One meeting, Beetle was dealing with his own beard. And the beard came back. COVID beard came back for the meeting, Beetle texted me. Why? I texted back. I don't know. I'm spraying Lysol when she leaves the room. She's like, I'm sitting here sweating. I have no idea what I have. I guess she came back for attention, Beetle replied. I sighed as I typed, ah, probably. Why did all these beards have to come back? Why couldn't this be the last year when we had the mass exodus of the beards? That was nice. I, I like it. But maybe they get less beardy over the summer. Uh, probably not, though. Hold on to hope, OP. That's what I say. Story five, graduation day. Have you ever sat through a graduation ceremony? If you have, you know how dull they are. Being part of it? Yes, yeah, even worse. <laughs> graduation in Australia was quite different. But when I graduated from college in America, Beetle practically had to force me into the cap and gown. It was not something that I've ever liked. So the irony that I volunteer every year, except next year when Beetle graduates, is not lost on me. Mostly I do it because I know it means something to the kids to see their teachers there. That said, I silently curse in my head the entire time while making sure to smile and be peppy and congratulate even the most ungrateful of students. While I don't look back on my graduation too fondly, some of them might and I want to help provide good memories. Graduation isn't just on that day either. The day before, we gotta participate in graduation practice, which is just as awful, if not worse. I did entertain myself by watching Manny Beard, however. We all gathered in the practice gym to line up, and then once everyone was in place, we proceeded into the main gym. The practice gym was so bloody hot that I was sweating. It was so bloody hot that Manny Beard actually took off his cardigan for the first time all year. Damn, I thought it was like sewn into his skin or something. That's surprising. <laughs> uh, I have now confirmed that he does have arms under the cardigan. Bloke never takes off his cardigan or coat, even when the outside temp is like 100 plus Fahrenheit. I further observed, only to realize that they had, for some reason, put Manny Beard in the same row as two of the baby beards I'd been observing over the course of the year. Manny Beard was as clueless as one might expect and had no idea how to manage the kids and tell them where to stand and where to sit and when to walk, etc. He did make it through graduation practice, but I was seriously concerned about the next day. I was also concerned because I saw the gown they set aside for Manny and it was huge. <laughs> he was going to look like a puppy wearing his owner's sweater. Let the chaos commence! Yeah, maybe he'll fall down in front of everybody and we can laugh. His face will turn all red and he'll run away like he's in a harem anime. And then a couple months later, he'll pop up at Click High School and call that principal daddy. <laughs> you see? It all loops back around. <laughs> uh, and commence it did. Shortly after lunch, Beetle texted me, Ozzy isn't coming back. What the hell's even going on around here? Remember Ozzy? No. <laughs> the other Australian on campus? Yeah, evidently he said, this really isn't something that I foresaw happening. It's something that I needed to do, but please, I don't want to make it seem like I'm excited to leave because I'm not. It's actually been really hard packing up my things. Ozzy had been around since the campus opened in 2016. It was a true shock to see him leave, and Beetle was very distraught over it. Honestly, so was I. After school, Beetle barreled into his classroom. Okay, mate, what the hell's going on? The conversation was private, so I'm not going to detail it, but I will say that circumstances happened so that Ozzy had to go back to Australia. He was not happy about it. He said that he thought he would retire from Standard High, but I don't know. Life happens. This was a blow, but we wished him the best. That's right. The only constant is change. I found out later that night that Manny Beard managed to outbeard himself. He did the beardiest thing that he'd ever done. Did you guys meet in English 1 today? I asked Beetle. Yeah, but it was more social than a meeting, Beetle replied. Manny Beard? Social? How'd that go? I asked. Beetle chuckled. Manny Beard wasn't there. Why? I asked. Because he miscalculated all his grades and had to redo them, Beetle said. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little guy. He's having a rough start, isn't he? It's his first year being a teacher. 
I feel bad that he sucks, but it's not really my fault. <laughs> uh, I froze as I tried to register what he had just said. Finally, I spoke. But our gradebook is automated. We don't calculate anything. We put in the number and BAM! Grades! How the hell did Manny manage to miscalculate grades? No idea. But Admin wasn't happy. They sent in Lana to guide him through it, Beetle said. I laughed. Oh my god. After everything he did to keep Lana out of his room, she ended up fixing his gradebook? The irony is too delicious. <laughs> this has got to be the beardiest thing he's ever done. How the fuck do you miscalculate grades in an automated grade book? Beetle shrugged. Talent? <laughs> there you go. He's interfacing with his robot companions. The next morning, last day of school, an email started circulating from teachers that were worried about getting left at the arena that we were holding the graduation in. We wanted to ensure the bus wouldn't leave them behind. Beetle and I watched as the emails flooded our inboxes. Manny Beard, I need a ride too. English Beard, don't leave me behind. History Beard, I look like too much of an escaped inmate to hitchhike safely. Don't leave me either. Math Beard, I need the bus to get, to get back to school. It was at that point I texted my brother to see if he could pick up Beetle and I after graduation. To be clear, we have to ride the bus over with the students, so taking our own car wasn't an option. But riding the Beard bus home did not appeal to either of us. I like getting fodder for stories, but I'm not a complete sadomasochist. Citation needed! <laughs> my brother agreed and I felt relief wash over me. Beetle and I ended up combining our classes in my cave for the last day because we brought breakfast tacos and donuts for the kids and it was easier to combine classes than to try and split the food, so most of the last day was the kids eating and playing Mario Kart on our Switch. It was pretty fun. I did leave the kids with Beetle at one point so I could go down to Cook's Kitchen and do my department checkout stuff. When I say Cook had a professional kitchen, that is not hyperbole. The culinary kitchen at Standard High is anything but standard. We're talking state-of-the-art kitchen that any head chef would be in awe of. It's truly a thing to behold, and for high school students, yeah, it is pretty bloody great. Oh, and the cutting boards. Let me tell you about the numerous cutting boards. <laughs> God damn it. Not again. <laughs> I'm kidding, Red. Just kidding. I like how that's become a thing. Cutting boards and backpacks and Funko Pops. But yeah, needless to say, the kitchen's pretty great. <laughs> anyway, I went into said kitchen. Media Beard was in there doing his checkout as well. When he saw me, he smiled and turned to me. Mandy, th thank you for so much for everything you did for me this year. It was a rough year and you had my back. I truly appreciate you, he said as he hugged me. Ew. <laughs> I hugged him back. Ah, uh, I gotcha. Anytime. Next year will be better. When I said back in Chapter 1 that Media Beard was certainly a beard, but one of the good beards, this is what I meant. Yeah, he could be a bit, well, beardly, but the bloke has a good heart. And I'm glad he will be back next year. I'm gonna try and mentor him now that I'm settled in graphic design. I'm also glad that he will not be Wee One's teacher next year. She decided to take graphic design 3 and animation 1, which means that she'll have me as her teacher for 3 out of 8 periods. Is that... is that okay? <laughs> is that normal? <laughs> uh, uh, most of the kids that I knew that had teacher parents wanted to stay far away from them. Surely there's a happy medium somewhere in there. <laughs> Come to find out, she does like me as her teacher, and I'm pretty hard on her. She said that I just made her better, so I must be doing something right. Yeah, parenting flex. I get it. Cook has 100% become my work mom, and I adore her. She plans to have a department soiree before school starts, and for the first time ever, I'm actually going to look forward to a department function, solely because of Cook. She's amazing. Finally, at long last, the 2022-2023 school year ended. All the non-senior students left, and the seniors arrived. Beetle and I scarfed our lunch down and headed to the gym. This is where graduation truly begins. I put my gown on over my work clothes, as did Beetle. We sat together and chatted for a bit before he went to his row to help organize kids. 
I was left sitting alone in my row as the students filed in, and as I usually do in these situations, I started to observe my surroundings and live in my own head a little bit. That's my favorite thing ever. Sitting there with your own thoughts, digging through them, thinking about stuff. Most people just go on their phone because they're scared to think about stuff. But really, you should try it. Once or twice. You never know what might come out of your own brain. Anyway, I saw some teachers grouped up talking and laughing near me. For a moment, I felt that loneliness that I felt all through school until I met Beetle. I had a moment of feeling like that weird blonde kid again. I guess it never really goes away. Formative experiences. <laughs> it was a reminder from that day that we met. See Squirrelbeard for that story. Beetle has always been where I fit in. Does anyone else ever have a moment of reversion like that? Where even as an adult, you remember how it was to be an outcast at 15 or whatever? Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's because I work in a high school. I was cool as shit by 15. Uh, like age 10, 11, 12. That's when I was really like the fat kid and awkward. And there's still a little bit of that in me deep down. In any case, I snapped out of it and looked around. What caught my eye was a pair of bright crimson skinny jeans. And the wearer? Manny Beard. Of course. Of course. Of course. He also had on a plain white t-shirt with the distinct logo on it that we got for free at the start of the year and van trainers. What was the dress code for this event that admin had explicitly given us the day before? Dress pants and a polo or a button up for men or, or a suit for men. Dress or nice pants and shirt for women, dress shoes, but absolutely no jeans or trainers or t-shirts. Yeah, that boy don't give a single fuck, do he? <laughs> you gotta kind of admire it in a way. So yeah, for Beatles part, he had on black pants and a black button-up shirt with a tie. He looked good. It was also the first time he got to wear his master's hood at a graduation, which was pretty freaking cool too. I had on black pants and a nice shirt. Anyway, Manny Beard, right? So he wore exactly what admin said don't wear because he's Manny Beard. And I was right. His gown made him look like a puppy wearing its owner's sweater. It would have been cute if it was anyone but Manny. Instead, he looked robotic and lost. <laughs> uh, and exactly like I suspected, he didn't talk to any of the kids. He didn't even congratulate them. Probably because he knew ninth grade teachers and he didn't know any of these kids, so he had no connection to them. Beetle knew a lot of them. These were the kids that he had taught his first year as a freshman, so he had seen them through all four years. It was emotional for him. I imagine it is. I would like to say that I'm bigger than all that, but yeah, after spending every single day, eight hours a day, for four years with these people, you probably do get a little uh, attached to them. But it's cool, you probably see them around, unless they die in a drunk driving accident. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's really dark. <laughs> it was around this time that I turned around and noticed paramedics in the hall. Oh no! Did I speak it into reality? <laughs> I later found out a student, one of mine actually, had a seizure. I had seen them roll a kid out of the building on an office chair, but I didn't know who until Mr. Principal told me later. As all this was happening, AP Beard said they put a sign-up sheet on the stage for any teacher that needed to take the bus back to campus after the ceremony. A bunch of teachers headed to the stage. One that looked like a textbook Beard said as he walked past me, hey, That would be all of us. <laughs> like any of us could afford an Uber with what they pay us. Well, that's just bad budgeting. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I raised an eyebrow and looked the man over. That has got to be history, Beard, I thought to myself. Beetle ran up behind me. See that bloke up there? The one at the sign-up sheet right now? Beetle asked me quietly. Yeah, I said. That's history, Beard, he confirmed. I knew it. I knew it had to be him. Damn, he is a beard, and it's not even on just the inside, I said. Beetle shook his head. Nah, he's one that is beard inside and out. I shuddered as Beetle returned to his seat. About 45 minutes later, we boarded the bus and headed to the arena. I hoped everything would be smooth sailing from there, but that would have been way too easy. Come on, sing some bus songs, like, like in summer camp or something. <laughs> so I need to paint you a bit of a picture here. 
Have you ever been backstage at an arena? It's not a huge space. And when you put a couple hundred people back there, it's a tight fit. We were lucky to have a two inch radius around us. Personal space does not exist when you cram everyone back there. Has anyone ever heard of like a single file alphabetical line? <laughs> no? Okay, fine. We had to line up in order. Each row had a letter. It seemed like everything was fine. My row was in order, but something felt off. That's when I realized whoever set up the signs doesn't know the bloody alphabet. Because instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it went A, B, C, D, E, G, F. I was in row F. I realized the error, but also wasn't about to move anything without telling an AP. So I found an AP that said he had to find another AP, and three APs later, I was told to swap rows F and G. Great. <laughs> I helped correct the sign, and then we had to shift the rows with very little space. It was... Yeah, it was something. I'm sure it was. It was hot and cramped and miserable. Beetle told me later some of the kids in his row snuck back into a supply room and were stealing popcorn. It was in the moments of being backstage that I remembered why. Last year, I said to myself, never again am I ever doing graduation. Ever again. I'm really not next year because of We Won, and I'll probably forget the year after and volunteer again because teacher brain... Anyway, it was finally time to go. We walked out, we sat down, the ceremony started. All done? Not quite. <laughs> For the sake of wrapping this up, I'll quickly list the crap that happened during the ceremony. Someone in the stands called to a kid, You look like E.T., but we love you anyway! To which a graduate yelled back, You're an asshole! Classy. It's high school kids, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Manny Beard was clueless and lost. He may as well have not even been there because he was just mostly in the way. The boys decided it was great fun to pretend to fall on stage just before they got to Mr. Principal. This happened four times. A fifth pretended he was about to fall and then twerked instead. Again, classy. Ladies and gentlemen, our future! <laughs> I mean, high school kids are dumb as shit. I don't know what you're expecting here. They're not going to be in charge of anything for another decade, decade and a half. I'm not too worried. <laughs> a boy in the row in front of me turned around and was using his program to sword fight with a boy in my row. I then gave them the teacher slash mom look and they both got a panicked look and said, Sorry, ma'am, before sitting straight for the rest of the ceremony. Maybe we won is right. Maybe I am scary. I wish I could be that entertained by a paper sword anymore. Just feel like my spirit's been crushed by reality. <laughs> Media Beard made the senior video and it was awful. I had a hard time believing he worked in the industry. Next year, I'm gonna see if he'll let me do some graphic design templates for him. It'll be part of my proposal to mentor him. Remember how I mentioned observing several baby neck beards during bus duty? Three graduated and one baby like beard as well. I discovered they were two sets of twins. Is there a beard gene? More research is needed, but this is good data. Somebody make a note of that. <laughs> and then graduation was over. Beetle and I checked in with number one and were cleared to leave. Brother picked us up and we headed to dinner, where brother once again came very close to getting the name Brother Beard and summer began. That concludes this year of School of Beards. If there's any demand, I'll be back in the fall because with all the beards returning, I'm sure to have a new batch of tails. I sincerely want to thank everyone that came on this journey with me, Red for reading and being a mate, and Beetle for supporting me and allowing me to share his stories. I mostly want to thank everyone that has listened to Red read these stories because that's the most amazing thing. Hearing these stories read and getting his insight. I do appreciate it more than I can say. <laughs> insight, yeah. I, I do what I can, how about that? <laughs> Keep an eye out for the rest of Bowser Beard this summer and maybe a couple one-offs. Now to end this year, I decided to try my hand at my first parody song. Apologies if it's not very good. Like I said, it's my first one. I hope it doesn't suck. My voice is far too wrecked. Uh, after, after almost four hours of reading, I don't have it in me to do a parody. I'm super sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get to it at some point, maybe make it a short or something like that. Rock songs are also super hard to uh, make a decent parody of. It's super hard for me to sing. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't do it.
Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see some other workplace shenanigans, here's a playlist full of Kevins. Always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, friends. You definitely, definitely deserve it. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown.